Hello, I wanted to make this video. So this is a blog post that I wrote in 2011. Um, <clears throat> I actually wrote a blog post and then I got a reply with some critique. And this was the reimagined blog post with my new learnings taken on board. Um, and it was kind of like an, a model for being able to manage data, performance analysis, visual analytics, the whole lot. So 2011 is a good while ago. Um, so at the time, data was growing, 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 but primarily the role was video of a performance analyst. But I was starting to get into the data collection side and collecting more and more data. So I kind of robbed some of this. Uh, there was three stages here. You can see data management, sports analytics, data visualization. But obviously, as, as analysts, we do a lot of the collection ourselves. So I, I kind of added this in, and this was the the process that I wanted to follow. So however many years, eight, nine years later, I suppose I wanted to do a, an off the cuff video just of my own processes, what I have, what I don't have, and how I go about doing all this. Just, it might be of interest to, to some people here. So the first thing is within relation to data collection. Now I happen to use Dartfish. I know that won't be everybody's cup of tea, but that's the, the software that um, that I use. One of the main things I like it for is that it gives me a nice CSV output. So these are all the, the, the data that I collect and I have a, a standard tagging panel. Again, for international viewers, you can ignore the sport. It's Gaelic football, which is native to here, but the same principles will apply. So I use the same tagging panel. And when I was setting out in 2011 with relatively small amount of games, but I knew I was going to grow and grow and grow. Uh, and I didn't want to manage all of these games in Excel. I figured early on that that wasn't the best place to do it. If I wanted the analysis to be robust and if I wanted you know, to look back over trends in the game, which is part of the work I would do for the National Association. So being able to chart different trends in the game since 2011, since I started collecting the data. So I knew I was going to grow in games. So I wanted to build a, a more robust model. So the first thing was designing a tagging panel uh, or coding window, which I've done. So this would has been relatively standard since we since we started. There have obviously been changes along the way, but relatively speaking, I've been able to keep this pretty consistent so that we're able to analyze year on year on year. Uh, it has some nice things in it in terms of the zone tool. So I'm able to tag each of the positions to particular zones and that kind of thing. All pretty standard stuff in terms of the data collection thing. Uh, then I export the events. So once I'm finished a game, I can export the events as a CSV file. All right. Now in the first season, I did about 30 games, but I expected that to grow and grow and grow. So I just did a rough count there before I started the video. I've now done about 1,200 games to more or less standards. Uh, not all to this full level of detail, but I've, I've about 1,200 games in, in my database. So I think having a consistent code window, code structure is really helpful for that year on year comparison. I know a lot of managers or a lot of teams would be very much like the next six games and the last six games and everything else gets binned. I quite like the, the ability to go back and look, certainly at individual player levels and things like that. So I, I, I think that's one of the first steps. If I was in an analysis department, that'd be one of the first things I, I would try and achieve is, is that consistency across games across age grades, across seasons, that kind of thing. So so we have a, a statistical bank that we can go back to. And obviously all of these link to particular points in the video. That's a standard. So once there, I export the CSV files um, and I can give you a quick look. So this is my folder structure. So again, I've gone back over previous seasons, but at the time I was starting in 2011, and these were the CSV files then that would be loaded around that time. Um, and then I've added each and every season up to 2018 and now 2019, but we have a whole host of CSV files. So 40, 50 games a season across different competitions that are within there. So once I've finished the game and I export the CSV to this folder, I use a program called Pentaho. Now, what I would say is this was built for me. This wasn't something I had the skill set to manage at the time. And it doesn't really matter what it is. 
all it's doing is it's taking the CSV file, it's transforming it, and it's putting it into a database. So rather than exporting it and keeping the files as Excel files or CSV files, I wanted a central location to be able to store these. So if we look at that, that was in terms of the data management. And I think the trigger for this was I was at a, a conference and Man City actually got up to talk. And again, this would have been around about 2009, maybe 2010, something like that. Um, and they answered three or four pretty obscure questions. And it, it was for entertainment value. And the, the penny dropped when they said, not alone were we able to answer them those questions. You know, it could have been something like the last time there was a flick on at the front post and then a volley to score in a corner, something like that. And they said, not only were we able to answer that, but we were able to answer that in under 60 seconds. And the penny kind of dropped to say, we have a lot of data going around, but to get to that quickly, like they were able to, uh, just simply wasn't there. And I wasn't seeing it in, in any of the, the teams or, or organizations I was working with. So I wanted to get this management piece in place where I was able to dip in and get to the data. So as I said, Pentao, this looks complicated. And I said, I still don't know a huge amount about it, but all it's doing is it's just transforming that CSV file and it's putting it into a database. So the database is a, a MySQL database. Uh, again, pretty straightforward to learn. It, it took me a couple of months to get fully to grips with everything, but I was able to, to learn it. Everything is basically split into tables. Um, so I have event tables and game info tables and player tables, and that's what that Pentao is doing. The databases are built to store loads of information. So I've just done a quick count here. I've got nearly 500,000 rows of information across nearly 1300 games. So I knew as I was going to grow and grow, I wanted one central place. And these are standard fields. Everything that passes through Pentao has to be in a, a certain place in a certain order. So it, it makes it harder for, for bad data or junk data to get in there. And in the process, I learned SQL to be able to query this database. Um, so I could look for, you know, a bit like you would filter in an Excel sheet almost, but it's you're running those type of queries. So you're saying, look at this table, find this player name, the last time he had a shot with his left foot in the second half. That kind of thing I, I was able to do uh, within SQL. And SQL isn't terribly difficult to learn. There are five or six basic tasks to it and that will get you most of the way in terms of, of what you would need. The final piece in the jigsaw then was to be able to obviously do some analytics around it and, and the data visualization. So for a long time I would collect the data, put it in the database and export it or a subset of it back to Excel and, and do some analysis on it there. So be able to do either statistical analysis or visualization or that kind of thing. And then in the last sort of four years, five years, I was able to add a program called Tableau on top of the database. So really what Tableau does is it connects directly to the database. So it makes a connection straight to these tables and then I'm able to build visualizations off it. So just to give you one quick example, I've created this shot map um, of certain players. So I could go in here and change the player name to Michael Murphy, for example, and I can see his shot percentage, his overall accuracy, and it's from play, where he likes to shoot in this kind of heat map idea. Okay, and that's all because it's it's reading the data in real time. So as a new game gets loaded by the coders, they run it through the Pentaho process, the data gets stored automatically in the database, and then this workbook gets updated. So I'm able to publish this workbook to something called Tableau Online, and anybody's able to any players or teams that have access are able to log in. They're able to use the filters and search for the various bits of information that they need. What it means for me is that I know that the database is the source of truth. So when I analyze a game or when somebody analyze a game and uploads to the database, I now know that the database is accurate, is relevant, is up to date. It's, it's my single source. I don't have to go and chase individual files and remember did I put that into the master folder or did I copy and paste that into the giant excel workbook that I have none of that kind of stuff 
once I've finished the game, I press play on Pentaho, runs through, and it's in my database and it's ready to be analyzed. And this is what it would look a blank sheet would look like, for example. So I'm able to come in here and look at the event origin. You know, so where were the teams shooting from? I could look at you know the number of records there's been across those. So I can very quickly see that from play is the most common shot type, where from free is is next. Okay, I could look at the score percentage across those. All right, so I could see very quickly and build up a picture of of what's the accuracy like, all from within the database, all with live information. So I don't know if that would be of any help. I was just looking back over old blogs and I came across this one and I thought it'd be worth mapping out maybe a little bit in practice what, what I saw here in 2011 and what I've got now. And the speed of which I can analyze the trust I have in the data. Um, it still takes time to clean data. There's still wrangling that needs to be done. But overall, um, I think it's, it's a nice model that has worked very well for me. So I hope that was useful.